Hi, this is Ian X04, and today we're going to build a bartering farm... farm. Okay, let me explain myself. Basic bartering farms are already easy to make. Most of the time, they involve giving random piglins name tags or armor to keep them from despawning, and then luring and trapping them in a cell. In today's video, we'll take this to the next level by building a farm to spawn the piglins. Hundreds of them, if you like. The farm will automatically put carved pumpkins on their heads to prevent them from despawning, and then trap them. Once you have all the piglins in the trap, the trap effectively becomes a bartering farm. But not just any bartering farm. With 256 piglins, for example, you'll be able to barter away an entire shulker box of gold ingots in merely 42 seconds. That gives a rate of over 800,000 bartering drops per hour. All these drops are stored crazy fast using a manual mixed item shulker box loader, so that they can be unloaded and sorted at your convenience. This way, you don't need to build a huge sorting system to handle all the drops from this farm, despite its insane speed. Altogether, this bartering farm design is among the most powerful available, yet it can be built easily in under 10 minutes, using barely any materials. The AFK spot for the piglin farm is high over the nether roof. Mobs can spawn within 128 blocks of the player, so the spawning area for the farm is 127 blocks below, in a small room that you carve away from the nether rack, just under the nether roof, so that it's the only spawnable area around the player. The farm is located in a crimson forest biome, since piglins commonly spawn here, and adult piglins are the specific type of mob that we'll need in a bartering farm. Other mobs also spawn here as well, of course, and we'll need to take some steps to make sure that they don't interfere. Hoglins run away from dwarfed fungus, which is placed in the corners of the spawn area, so that they'll tend to go towards the middle of the room, where there's a depression that is 128 blocks from the player, causing them to despawn. A few zombie piglins will be attracted to a turtle egg on one side, and they will despawn after some time. Until then, these zombie piglins are actually kind of useful, because ordinary piglins run away from zombie piglins, and they also run away from soul torches near the middle of the platform. The overall effect is that they will tend to run along the wall on the opposite side of the room. This takes them to a dispenser that puts a carved pumpkin on its head before dropping them into a trap. Baby piglins aren't tall enough for the dispenser to reach them, so they'll despawn if they happen to drop into the trap. Most of them, though, will run into these slots in the corners instead, and this causes them to despawn due to distance from the player. The trap for the piglins is just a small room, three long and one wide. There's a scaffolding block on each end, which prevents entity cramming, but it has the added feature that the mobs inside of the scaffolding will eventually stop pathfinding their way out. As a result, most of the piglins stay inside the scaffolding, with just a few in the empty space in between, which is quite different from the usual behavior that you see using other anti-cramming blocks, like ladders or vines. Once the desired number of piglins are loaded into the farm, you can barter with them by dumping stacks of gold ingots next to them. Every six seconds, they will drop a wave of bartering items, which you then pick up and place into a mixed item manual shulker box loader by simply mashing shift click on your mouse until the box fills up. This contraption lets you store drops extremely quickly at over a half million unsorted bartering items per hour, including non-stackables. You'll only need to use it for a few minutes at a time before the gold from the bartering runs out. This crazy fast bartering speed and crazy fast storage speed ensures that the gold ingots and bartering drops don't get a chance to despawn, which would happen if you let them sit around for more than five minutes. Storing all the items so quickly also means that you don't need to build a huge super fast sorting system to keep up with the pace of bartering drops. These unsorted items can be sorted at a more leisurely pace, and perhaps at a more convenient location. Many players already have a shulker box unloader, coupled with a sorting system at their base. If you don't, you can build this extremely basic system that will unload shulker boxes, sort the 13 stackable bartering drops, and consolidate the unstackables into chests. You can build this at your base, or chunk load it so that it runs in the background while you do other things. Or you can build the sorting system right at your gold farm. That way the system will sort through the bartering drops of your last batch of gold, while you AFK to get your next batch of gold. If you do this, take into consideration that each gold ingot produces about 5.6 bartering drops on average, so your sorting system will need to keep up with this pace while you AFK for gold. For example, a gold farm that produces 3,000 ingots per hour will require sorting about 16,800 bartering drops per hour, 
which can be managed by two of these single-speed sorting systems. Keep in mind that this is just a basic example. Other options include fire-based shulker box unloading, water streams or ice paths, or stack separation, among many, many other options. You can decide which solution will work best for you, based on your specific situation. Okay, let's get to building. Start by finding an empty area in a crimson forest biome. And work your way up so that your feet are at Y117 and carve out an 8x5 room, three blocks high, and build out the shulker box loader, as shown. When done, give the shulker box loader a test. Load it with empty shulker boxes and place one on top of the dispenser. Opening the shulker box and closing it should do nothing, but if you place anything inside the shulker box and then close it, a new box should take its place. On the side of the room that the shulker box faces, place an open fence gate against the middle of the wall. Add a scaffolding to each side of it, and then build the walls of the piglin chambers out of glass blocks, topped off with solid blocks. Stand in front of the gate and clear out two additional blocks overhead and pillar up on three temporary blocks. Open up the two blocks in front of you, and you should see the fence gate below. Place a trapdoor to cover the hole, with the hinge on the side facing away from you. Now create a 16x16 16 16 room in front of you, two blocks high. You want the trapdoor to be near the middle of one side of the room, with the hinge of the trapdoor on the side closest to the middle of the room. Replace the corners of the room with a form of dirt, podzol, nylium, or soil soil, and place a warped fungus on top of each. Break six blocks around the fungus to create a slot for baby piglins to drop into. Repeat this for each corner of the room, and from each warped fungus, count five blocks diagonally and set down a soul torch. Remove the line of blocks between the soul torches, stand in the middle of the 4x4 four four square, and record your X and Z coordinates. The level of your feet should be at Y120. Once you have this critical information recorded, remove the remaining 4x4 four four square in the middle. On the side of the room opposite of the trapdoor, remove two blocks and one more overhead to create a room for the turtle egg. Be sure to set the egg on the ground at foot level, and then seal off the room with two blocks. Directly over the trapdoor, place a dispenser facing down, and load it with as many carved pumpkins as you would like piglins in the bartering farm. I'll use 128 in this example. Place a temporary block and an observer looking down so that it powers the block next to the dispenser, and drop down through the trapdoor to get back to the bartering stations. Remove the temporary blocks and place a lever on the floor and power it to open the gate. Place a top slab over it, and place another observer looking at the observer that's already overhead. You should hear the dispenser repeatedly firing. The piglin farm is now activated. We just need to get to the AFK spot. Build a portal frame nearby, and write down its X and Z coordinates. Label this information so that you don't get it confused with the coordinates at the center of the spawning area. Light the portal, and then work your way up to Y121, and dig a short tunnel to explore overhead for a bedrock block at Y126 or Y127. The targeted block information on the right side of the F3 debug screen tells you the coordinates of the block that you're looking at. When you find one, fill in the tunnel that you made so that mobs don't spawn here, and place ladders all the way up to the bedrock block. Hold down both forward and jump keys, and throw an enderpearl at the ladder so that you pass through to the other side with a little bit of damage. Now go to the X and Z coordinates for the center of the spawn area, and pillar up until your feet are at Y247. This is the AFK spot. The farm will trap four to five piglins each minute on average. 
Wait here about 15 minutes for each stack of carved pumpkins that you put into the dispenser. For example, I put in two stacks of carved pumpkins, so I'll need to wait 30 minutes. When done, bridge out to the X and Z coordinates of the portal near the bartering farm, and build a portal at this location. Go through, and then re-enter the portal in the overworld. You should find yourself back at the farm. Put on a piece of gold armor, and remove the bottom observer to stop the clock. Check the dispenser to make sure that all the carved pumpkins are gone. If you find some unused pumpkins, this tells you that you don't have quite as many piglins as you originally intended, and you can decide whether it's worthwhile to AFK some more. Assuming everything is fine, place a block under the observer, and close the trapdoor under the dispenser so that nothing else can get into the trap. Now depower the lever to close the gate between the scaffolding blocks. Wait for the piglins in the middle to move inside the scaffolding. You can nudge them a little if needed. Place a top slab over the closed gate, and then remove the lever, and the top slab over the lever, and put two trapdoors in their place. Each trapdoor should be attached to a different side. Flip the bottom trapdoor up, and stand on it so that you can break the block on the other side of the top slab, and the block underneath it. Put two iron bars in their place. Finally, place torches to light up the area. To use the bartering farm, place an empty shulker box on the dispenser, and 14 more in the loader, and then fill your inventory with gold ingots. Stand on the lower trapdoor, and toss the ingots over the slab to the other side by holding down Control and the drop key, which is Q by default, while you move your cursor over all the inventory slots. Now flip down the trapdoor beneath you, and drop down between the two trapdoors, and get as close to the piglins as possible. This positions you to be able to pick up all of the bartering drops. Open the shulker box in the loader so that your cursor is over the middle top inventory slot, and mash shift-click over and over until the box fills up. When there's no more room, close the box and repeat the process on the next box that appears. Do this until every drop is stored. You won't find many iron boots in your bartering drops at first, because, ironically, the piglins will pick them up and wear them. It's not a big deal. These boots are usually considered junk items anyways, but you'll see them show up as you barter more, because eventually all the piglins will end up wearing boots. When you're done using the farm, grab your shulker boxes and take them to be sorted. Or just grab what you need straight from the shulker boxes. And actually, if you don't have shulker boxes, you can just use a bunch of double chests instead. Other tips and suggestions can be found in the video description. Be sure to check it out before you start building to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information ahead of time. You can stop by my Discord as well, which is also linked in the video description. I'd like to take a moment to thank my Discord community for all the feedback and suggestions to the farm design and tutorial. In particular, I'd like to thank Boyan for his design of the manual shulker box loader that is used in this tutorial. It's compact, fast, cheap, and all around it's a bit better than the design that I had originally developed. So thanks again to Boyan and everyone else, and thank you for watching today. See you next time.